Spawn Enemy Attacks. Today I will be sharing with you a script that will generate random enemy attacks. With this you can define who the enemy is, where they will come from, how many attacks there will be, and the time between each attack. To begin with, you're going to need a mission set up, and I have one already. Let's go to the Scenario tab at the top, and then down to Open Scenario Folder, and we will install the script. Here we are in the Mission Folder. I have the script in another folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link this for download in the description of the video so you guys can download it. And once you get it, what you're going to do is you're going to take these two files and you're going to put them into your mission folder just like that. Once you have them in your mission folder, what you're going to do is you're going to go to this folder here, C System, and open that. Once you're in this folder, you're going to go to this script here, C open me sqf and basically this script is for the initialization and configuration of the main functions of the script spawn enemy attacks or C and this was created by Enix so you install the script like we just did and then you need to put empty markers on the map to identify the different routes of the waypoints of the enemy attacks and each route will be like a1, A2, etc. I'll explain that further once we get to that point. This tells you how to activate the system. We have this set up. This is for ACE. This kind of explains what you need the INAT player local.sqf for, which we already installed. And all this code is already installed, so you don't have to worry about that. And if we go down, it says by triggers in editor or by debug console. So basically, we need to place markers on the map, and then we need to place a trigger that will initiate the attack. We're going to scroll down, and you're going to go to this section, section to be modified. Now here is a couple of parameters, and this is the number of attacks. So this is the number of times. This is just default. You can change this to what you want. This is the time attacks, which is 10 seconds time in seconds between one attack and the next. The type of faction, this is the type of faction that will be attacking. So what you need to do here is change this to whatever faction side that you want. So for today, I'm going to change this to independent. And I'm going to put independent here. So that sets the faction. And then down here is the array of infantry units. Each one of these is an array. And what you're going to do is you're going to go in game and you're going to put down the soldiers that you want to be in each one of these arrays. There's, these are going to be like little small fire teams. And these are going to be little groups that will spawn. Now there's also vehicles that you can spawn. By default you need at least one vehicle. We're just going to get rid of all these vehicles right here and just have a, a truck that's covered. That's all we need to do for the vehicles. We're going to go down to first thing that we need to do is the array of waypoint routes of markers. We're going to go back into the editor and set these up. Back in the mission, what we're going to do now place the markers on the map. We're going to choose a bunch of routes for these enemies to spawn and follow. So we're going to have a route here. We're going to have a route here. We're going to have a route here. One coming from here and one coming from here. So what we need to do is we're going to go to F6 markers and then to system and then to empty and we're going to start over here and we're going to place the marker right on the road. We're going to edit the marker and we're going to name it A underscore 1. All right, once you have that, press Control C, and we're going to want to space these out. So we're going to V, and you notice it says A2. We'll just have them go across the road here, and then the last marker is going to be here, A5. So that's one route. Where the A1 marker is, that's where the enemy is going to spawn. And where the last marker ends, that's where the enemy is basically going to 
no, attack. So the next set of markers will go here. We'll place this one here. I'm going to edit this marker, and this one has to be in B. So B, B1. We're going to copy this and paste it here. Notice it says B2 already, so nothing for us to do but place it. And right about there, that's fine. B3, and we could have him go here, B4. And B5. All right, so that's that route. We'll choose another one, and this one will go from here. They're going to spawn here. I'm going to edit this one. This one is going to be C, C underscore 1. Then you're going to take this and you're going to copy it. Press Control C. I'm going to go here. And we're going to have them cut across the grounds here. And right about there, C5. And we'll take the next one and we'll start them off about here. I'll edit this one. This one's going to be D, D underscore 1. That one says D2. And I'm going to have them come across here, three, and then four. So we have D one through four. And our last route will be over here. And this one's going to be E, E underscore one. And we're going to copy that and E2, E3, E4, and we'll just put them here, E5. All right, so you can see all the ones we have, A, B, C, E. So now that we have those, we're going to save our mission, and now we just got to update the script with any extra markers so that they are going to be used. Back in the script... What I did is I updated these marker names to the code. So you basically, if you're going to add more marker names, all you need to do is separate them with a comma and just put them in quotes like I did here. And A, B, and C, as you can see on the left here, A had 5, B had 5, C had 5, D had 4, and then there was no E section, so I basically just copied this, pasted it here, and then changed all the D to E's, and then just gave it one, two, three, four, five, as there's five here. And then you put a comma after the one before the last one, and at the end here, the array doesn't get a comma. And that's it. That's all you have to do for the markers. What we need to do now is we're going to scroll up, and we're going to place a trigger, and this trigger is going to call the script to basically initialize the attack. So this is what it does. It starts the attack cycle. Now, if you wanted to stop the attack, then you could use this code here. But we're just going to start it and go from there. So basically, we're going to copy this code right here. Press Control c and we're going to go back in the mission we're going to set up a trigger. What we're going to do now is we're going to choose a trigger without a size. And I'm going to place it right here. And I'm going to resize the trigger. So that I can just walk into it. Alright, now we're going to edit the trigger. And we're going to set the activation to blue for present. We don't need to make it repeatable because I'm only going to initiate the attack once. And then in the on activation box, I'm going to press control V, which will add the code that we copied from the script. We just hit OK and that sets up our trigger. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to go to F2 
I'm going to choose independent. We're going to go to FIA infantry. We're going to choose an assault squad and place them. All right, so with this, with them highlighted, we're going to acquire their class names. Actually, we're just going to keep this a little bit smaller, so we're going to get rid of a couple of guys on the end. So we're going to go with these guys, five soldiers. And what you're going to do to get their class names is you're going to right-click one of them, and then you're going to go to down to where it says Log, and then Log Classes to Clipboard. You click on that. Once that menu disappears, then you've logged the classes to the clipboard. Back to the script and add the class names to the array. All right, back in the script, if you scroll down and you go to where it says Array of Infantry Units, we're going to go right here. And in between these quotes, we're going to press Control V. And that's going to paste all the class names for each of the soldiers. Now we have to add quotes and commas in order for the code to be properly used. So what we're going to do is add the quotes at the end of each one of these. And make sure that we do it correctly. And then we're going to put a comma after each one of them. I'm going to situate it like this. All right, so that's one array. The second array, what we'll do is we'll just copy the first three and then paste it in the second array box. Takes care of that. And then the third array, we're going to take these three. Now, obviously, you can make this more custom than what I have it here, but I'm basically just showing you what's possible and what and how this works. So that sets up the arrays. If we go down to vehicles, we already have a vehicle set, so that's going to spawn. If you wanted to, to add a vehicle, basically get its class name like we did with the soldiers, add a comma here, put the class name in, and put quotes around that class name like you see like this. And then that's all you have to do. All right, so we have that set up. Let's save it and go test the mission out. All right, back in the mission. Let's play it. All right, let's get ourselves a launcher. And let's go activate the trigger. All right, once you activate the trigger, you're going to get a hint at the top right that says cycle of attacks has started. Once everything is spawned, it'll say cycle of attacks has ended. So now we just see where all these guys are spawning at. Let's go to spectator and we're going to go to the map. You can see where they're spawning in at. So we've got a group there, got a group there. Remember this is random so not every marker that we placed is going to be utilized. vehicle.
Damn, I killed most of them. <laughs> Got him. And that's the last guy.